So let me explain how the social security card can be considered a credit card. Okay, so the term credit card means any card, plate, coupon, book, or other credit device existing for the purpose of obtaining money, property, labor, or services on credit. Pretty straightforward and to the point. This can be found at 15 United States Code 1602. Now I want to go over this case, Washington versus Pacific Credit Exchange, because the plaintiff tried to explain exactly that in this case. So going over the relevant section, the plaintiff's claim alleges improper use of the credit card referencing the social security card, as well as his California identification card. And he does that by referencing the United States code that I mentioned earlier in this video. The court's stance is that there is no legal authority to support the proposition that such identification is constituted as a credit card. The reason behind the court's stance is that they say social security numbers and government identification cards are sometimes used as identification in the context of obtaining credit, but they do not exist for the purpose of obtaining credit. So let's see if the court's stance on that is 100% solid. We're going to look at 26 CFR section 301.7701-11. Okay, we're going to click on security, that highlighted definition at the top. Then we're going to get this. Security. The term security means any bond, denture, note, or certificate, or other evidence of indebtedness issued by a corporation or a government or a political subdivision thereof, with interest coupons, or in registered form, share of stock, voting trust certificate, or any certificate of interest or participation in, certificate of deposit or receipt for, temporary or internum certificate for, or warrant or right to subscribe to, or purchase any of the foregoing negotiable instruments or money. And if you go to the Social Security's website and you look up how the Social Security number is supposed to be used, it says by itself it is not a personal identifier because it lacks systematic assignment to every person and the means to authenticate a person's identity. But I mean, the court's not going to do your research for you. And it was up to the plaintiff to do his due diligence and prove his claim. And nowhere in that case is this referenced. So what I mean to say by this is, You'll need more than surface level comprehension to do the things that you want to do and state the claims that you want to state. And for those who are confused as to how the social security number works or what it means to have one in reference to the security aspect, let's look at 20 CFR section 422.104, where it talks about who can be assigned social security numbers. If you click on that definition U, you get this. U means an individual who owes a debt to the United States within the scope of this subpart. I mean, you see right here where it says at the bottom, purchase any of the foregoing negotiable instrument or money, which is a contradiction to the court's stance. But hey, the only one who can express that is the plaintiff.